Hello, welcome back, and I have to say I'm absolutely excited to begin one of my favorite video game trilogies I have ever played. So while the title screen loads here, while muted, I'll go ahead and show off a few of my precious possessions. So here is a player's guide to Donkey Kong Country that I actually got in the mail. I don't quite remember why or how I ordered this. Maybe it was through Nintendo Power even. But interestingly enough, I didn't get to play Donkey Kong Country 1 in its entirety until I played the second game in its entirety. So here is the game guide for it as well. So it was kind of interesting going back to Donkey Kong Country 1 after playing the, the more refined DKC2 game. But I did in fact play like as far as I had the opportunity to borrow DKC1 and play it. So I knew I wanted them all. And then of course the third game, Donkey Kong Country 3, here is a player's guide for it as well. So I I love to have those strategy guides because they're kind of like a piece of history, if you will. Pretty spendy to track down nowadays in the good condition that I have them in. But in, in any event, let's go ahead and allow you to soak in the sound from the intro there. So I love that intro. Essentially the lore behind this game is the following. If you notice that original long bearded it was, is called Cranky Kong and he is depicted as being the original ape that was in the Donkey Kong arcade version. And so you as Donkey Kong are just kind of like this, you know, no skill, no class, no talent, like a Luke Skywalker. when. The Anakin Skywalker has done everything by the age of six already. One thing I absolutely love about this game is remember the uh, the Super Nintendo was more or less a sprite based ability sort of system. However, with this, all of your characters and sprites look 3D. That's because these games, Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3, as well as Super Mario RPG, had companies like Silicon Valley model their actual models with like millions of pixels or whatever with their supercomputers back in the 90s, which I, we can probably all do on our phones these days. And then they took from those models various uh, stills in the animation and then that's what they used to convert into Super Nintendo sprites. So in any event, really beautiful though and considering if you know how limited the Super Nintendo is as far as graphical capability, the graphics are pretty stinking impressive. So as you can see, Donkey Kong's poor banana horde has been stolen. So I would say that uh, when Rareware was uh, set out to create this game, they kind of tried to model almost everything in the game, something realistic regarding how monkeys or apes or chimpanzees would actually be like in some sort of natural setting. So for example, we have jungles, we have caves, and everything. As the series progressed, well, we'll get to that commentary later. But as you can see, it being a rareware game, they have thrown in as many animal buddies as possible. Mm -hmm. 
So here's another fun fact. There's a secret there too. So in Donkey Kong Country 2 and 3 there are actually multiple endings. However, in this game there's only one ending. So even though there are a lot of secrets throughout the game, there's really no incentive on 100%ing it, as in finding every single secret in every single course. That and the fact that, um, ooh, I actually really love this level too. This rain effect is pretty cool for the Super Nintendo tech as well as the flashing lightning background too. So I'll go ahead and let the, the game stall because there are even animations programmed if you don't sit in, or if you just sit there and don't play anything. And if you duck, there's animations for ducking. If you walk to an edge, I need to get to the other edge, I think. There's animations for what happens if you're almost about ready to fall off the edge. There's Diddy Kong's Oh, I'm going to fall off the edge animation. So in any event, what I was going to say prior to this though, it's likely that I'll just showcase the levels here and not 100% it. However, it will likely be the case that I do on Donkey Kong Country 2 and 3 by virtue of the multiple endings those games have. So when it comes to platforms, or platforming games, what are some things that have to hit all cylinders, so to speak? I would say amazing gameplay, fun, fluid physics, and music. And honestly, the music for Donkey Kong Country games are amazing. Sure, come on over, beats talking to myself. Well, I've never seen anything like it. Enjoy this demo while you can. It can't last much longer. That's right, four shades of gray in a 2x2 two two character block. That's all we had. I can't play this game. The colors are all too rich for my poor old eyes. Why, even the bananas have more frames and colors than I had in the entire game. Look. Look at this, as I rock, my beard swings. Waste of frames, in my opinion. Go bananas in the snake pit of the reptile rumble. So you get hilarious cranky dialogue. Oops, there's more. If you bounce a keg off a wall and then jump on it as it rolls back, you can ride it. Donkey, I've seen enough. That tie, turn it off. Even though I'm Diddy. So he has hilarious cranky dialogue, but every once in a while throws in a, a actual tip that will help you in the game. But that is Cranky's Cabin. Another difference between this original DKC1 and then the second and third games is the fact that all you have to do is actually get to the secret room in the original game and it counts as you've discovered it. You don't have to win or even play the bonus game. However, in the second and third games, in the bonus game itself, there's like a coin collectible and so that is what you have to collect in order for it to actually, you know, be cleared, so to speak. 
So that's why you'll also kind of see me throw a lot of the uh, the bonus games, because you plain and simply don't have to play them. So incidentally, that barrel, with that is like your, your midway. So if I die, I will come back to that. Remember the uh, Goomba shoe from SMB3, where you can hop midair? Well, the uh, your spin animation, you can still jump at any point in it. So check this out. I can like cartwheel off and then midair jump, which isn't much of a mechanic in the original game, but trust me, in some of the harder levels, ah, tried to get too fancy there. In say Donkey Kong Country two and three, that move is actually required, but it's not that hard. It's certainly not a Kaizo level difficulty trick or anything. Here's another secret: whenever the name just appears, Coral Capers, it means that there are still secrets. However, if you see an exclamation mark appear after it it means that you have discovered every single bonus room in that course. This is one of the most iconic and, in my opinion, overly deified pieces of music in all of Donkey Kong games. Like, it has been remixed, OC remixed, a million times. Everyone has to do their own aquatic ambience music. And is it beautiful music? Sure, but like, in my opinion, the water level music in Donkey Kong Country 3 is better. And not just that, like, there are many musical tracks in Donkey Kong Country games, period, that I think are also better. But, you know, music is an extremely subjective thing, so... No worries. I'm just glad other people enjoy the music as much as I do. So here is our second showcase animal buddy, in Garde, the uh, swordfish. So you can dash, but you're almost kind of invincible. Okay, here's another difference. In the first game, if you already have both Kong buddies, you can't break open these DK barrels. However, in the original, this game, if I touch this, it still breaks. So if I was smart, but I was just kind of showing this off, you would skip that just in case you get hit, and then you could always retrace your steps and grab that to get your animal buddy back. Oops. So when you get hit with the animal buddy, which one do you want? Oh boy. I should stop playing around. When you get hit, the animal buddy swims off in some direction, and usually you don't get them again because they jump off the edge of somewhere or something. But if... Oh, man. If there's, like, you know, walls on both sides, you can still get them at any time. Well, I missed the O, so we'll just, uh... Not worry about the G. And if you ever wondered or thought your Donkey Kong Country Return Games difficulty are too hard, at least you get hits. You might notice in this game, you only get one hit per Kong. So right now, since I'm only with Diddy, let me read this right quick. Whoa, dudes, my name's Funky Kong. My bodacious jumbo barrel can launch you to any point in the island. Most unfortunately, it can only send you to a place you've already been to, which is a complete and total bummer, let me tell you. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> I didn't mean to jump into it. Okay, <laughs> just out of curiosity, did you happen to notice any visual 
visual glitches or artifacts. If you look at this cave, notice, can you see the background scrolling behind it? There are like, let me mouse over this, clear imperfections square in the shape of tiles that are missing because evidently there's not a tile that covers that that can fit in the tile set. <clears throat> I tell you, ever since I started ROM hacking, it has ruined me to these games because I see the flaws and imperfections. Oops. Well, now that you saw the secret shortcut there, let me play the actual level. Alright, so yeah, as I was saying, now that I have, say, two animal buddies, though, I have two heads. And if I get an animal buddy like Rambi the Rhino and Garde the Swordfish, as well as some other future ones upcoming, you have an extra hit because one hit you'll lose your animal buddy and then you'll just be down to the Kongs. See how that breaks? So yeah, for sure the retro difficulty is... Ah! Oh, same thing. The retro difficulty is, is cranked up in this game. Hey, I never said I was good at video games. Candy do? As the title says, save point. Hi, I'm Candy Kong, and this is my save point. If you want to save your current game, jump into my spinning save barrel. Yes, ma'am. This is Naughty's Lair. This beaver is pretty easy, but fun to beat. You just have to jump on his head, but each time you hit on, hit, uh, jump on his head, his jumps get bigger and bigger. 